Hi, my name is Ryan Harper, and I'm the host of Reporter's Notebook. And today we have Claire Curry, who is here today to talk about the Moorhead City Tournament called Big Rock. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. I um, had a pretty chill day today, um, but yesterday was very busy uh, at Big Rock, one of the first days of the tournament. So it was really exciting to be there and back after two years of doing it. Um, it's definitely a great time out on the coast. Great, great. Now, uh, for people who do not know what Big Rock is, this uh, this this fishing tournament that's in uh, Moorhead City, can you tell us a little bit about that? Definitely. So Big Rock, for people who don't know what it is, it's one of the largest and oldest fishing tournaments, not just here um, in North Carolina, but across the country. It's a really big deal. People travel from all over the state or not even in the state in the state as well, like out of state people come to Moorhead City um, to fish. Uh, it's, they bring in like 600 pound fish. They're massive. It's insane to see people standing next to these blue marlin that are double, triple the size that they are. Um, and the winners get some, some pretty big uh, amount of money. Uh, this year's purse, I believe is $5 million, maybe a little more. Um, which is, you know, definitely a lot of money to win, uh, mm -hmm. if you're, if you're an angler. Um, but yeah, that's what Big Rock is. Now, uh, you said that you covered this story before. Um, uh, how was it last time compared to now? Last year? Um, I think it was early on to me reporting. So it was a little stressful. I think, um, this year I was kind of more accustomed to all the chaos and all the people at Big Rock, so it wasn't as stressful. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was very cool to be back for sure um, and see everybody and everything that's going on there. The other thing I was going to mention is the economic impact that it has for uh, Moorhead City. Can you tell us a little bit about that as well? Definitely. Big Rock is a huge contributor to a lot of the charities in Carteret County and in Eastern North Carolina. I believe they told me since 1990 something, they had given like $8 million to nonprofits and charities local to the area. And this year they wanted to give people the opportunity to give back to their communities. Cause again, people come from all over the country for this tournament. So they did this system this year where you can buy a $10 raffle ticket. You can, um, you know, buy as many as you want and, if you, your raffle ticket gets selected, you know, once they make that drawing, you can give, uh, you know, a couple thousand dollars to a local nonprofit in your hometown back where you are. You can pick whatever uh, nonprofit you want. It all goes to a good cause. And a lot of the different things that Big Rock does go to good causes, even their um, Big Rock shop where you buy all the T-shirts and the hats. They also give back to their charities. They do scholarships for students um, in the area, which I've also gotten out to talk to some of the students who have gotten scholarships from them. Um, yeah, they do a lot of different things to help give back. Um, and as long along with giving back to different things in the community, they also bring a lot of business and people in because people are staying at the hotels for the tournament. People are eating at all the restaurants around the waterfront. Um, I was going around asking for businesses yesterday to talk to me. Everyone was slammed like yeah. hour, hour and a half long waits. Mm -hmm. um, I luckily found a couple people that were interested in talking to me. But um, yes, uh, the, the businesses do very well. It's probably the busiest week of the year for them, um, which is really great to see that all these, you know, businesses in the area are being impacted so heavily by this awesome tournament that are also giving back to charities in the area. So uh, with all the information, uh, what is it like to see these massive fish? So, so the people who do not know these blue marlins, in order to uh, register, they have to be at least 400 pounds. Uh, what was it like seeing a fish that was that uh, huge? I remember when I first came to Big Rock and I heard they brought in massive fish. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't expect how large they actually were. Um, now I'm kind of used to it. And honestly, mm -hmm. when they come out of the water, they all look massive. Right. Um, it's hard to look at it and be like, oh, that's not, you know, 400 pounds, the, the minimum weight to be in the, in the tournament. They all look insanely large. All these anglers should be super proud of the massive fish they are bringing in. 
Um, and along with all the little game fish as well, um, it's really cool to see them bring in like mahis and things like that um, as well to Big Rock Landing. A five, there's a $5 million purse for the heaviest weighing blue marlin that comes in um, throughout the tournament, which is a crazy amount of money. Mm -hmm. um, right now on the leaderboard, I was there yesterday when the C student brought in a 470 pound blue marlin, putting them on the board and, you know, in first place. <laughs> Um, and then there was a few others that came in yesterday, but they didn't meet that 400 pound requirement. Um, and then today I've been kind of keeping my eye on the leaderboards and it looks like a few more came in. Um, they hadn't had many that met that 400 requirement, but there was another one that came in the C toy and theirs was 463. So really close to beating that top first place spot. Um, but they are now in second. And this is also kind of interesting because that's, you know, a lot of weight um, for a fish. But the big thing is the 500 pound fish. If anyone brings in a 500 pound fish still, they'll get the fabulous fisherman's prize mm -hmm. um, if they're registered for that section of the tournament. And that's $739,000 for that first fish that comes in over 500 pounds. <laughs> and it's still up for grabs, mm -hmm. you know, at the end of day two, pretty much. Um, so there's you know, quite a few more days that people can get out of the water and see if they can claim that prize or bring in some heavier marlins that are going to top that first place spot, 470 pounds. Goodness. <laughs> now, uh, what, what is your favorite part of this tournament that you've seen like in the past and now? Is it something that people want to think to um, see or experience? I would say definitely yes. Um, it's really great to see the amount of people that come into Moorhead City for this tournament. Like the the streets are packed with people. Um, all the businesses again are like swamped. But it's like really great to see just like everyone with a love of fishing or just love you know being out on the water. Love of you know hanging out in the in the Moorhead City area, Carteret County community. It's really great to see all the people that come into town for this one tournament. Um, it's definitely like the biggest thing out in, you know, Moorhead City, maybe even Eastern North Carolina. They mm -hmm. get some pretty big crowds out there for sure and from all over the country. So for those who don't know, uh, what else can people expect for the Big Rock Tournament and our coverage of it? Definitely. Um there's going to be, you know, coverage every single day of the Big Rock tournament throughout the rest of, you know, the tournament. Um, I know that we have some people looking into looking the research behind the fish. So after the fish come into the Big Rock landing, they will, um, you know, study the fish, you know, what they're eating, um, where they've been. Um, they, it's really interesting to learn about. I know I learned about it last year. Um, you can see what they eat. You can learn more about their environment. Um, how long they've been living for. It's really cool to see the research that goes in um, to the tournament as well. I know they're going to talk a lot about the history of the tournament. It's been going on for a very long time. Um, and, you know, it's grown so much with, um, you know, the amount they're able to give back to the community and nonprofits. Um, they'll probably touch on the KWLA tournament, which is the ladies only tournament. Um, is, you know, another really big part of Big Rock that kind of, you know, developed over time. And then um, I will be there probably talking about voter superstitions, which is something that I don't think many people know about. Mm -hmm. Voters are very um, into believing certain things will make, I don't know, the fish not, you know, take a bite, I guess. Right. Um, I've heard people say, you know, no bananas allowed on board. You can't bring a banana on my boat <laughs> while I'm fishing in this tournament. Really? Um, even the color yellow. Any songs with the word banana in it. They don't want anyone who's eaten a banana within the last 24 hours. You ain't getting on board is what I've heard from some of the people right. out there. They yeah. are very superstitious on how uh, the tournament will go with those factors. And that's just one common thing that people uh, believe there's also things like no women on board for this big rock tournament. I've heard that. I've heard, you know, we only listen to one style of music the whole time. And if we're not getting any bites, maybe we'll switch it up and do a different genre um, or a different artist. So that's kind of interesting to hear from a lot of the anglers and captains out there. 
Um, I might hear some new ones this year, which I'm excited to hear about. Um, but right. that's some of the things that you can expect from our coverage over the next couple of days, along with obviously any changes in the leaderboard, you know, any new fish coming into uh, the way station and, you know, all of that kind of stuff as well. So. So with all that being said, uh, where can people find you if they want to send you stories or have any story ideas? People can find me most often on my Facebook. It's Claire Curry TV. I also have a news Instagram, but I don't really post much on it. Um, but I think it's C Curry News. And um, you can always email me. I think my email is on the station website, I believe. Or you can just send it into the newsroom if you have any Jacksonville related or Onslow County related stories, Carteret County related stories, um, Duplin Jones County related stories, anything down here along the Crystal Coast and kind of inward, um, you can reach out to me, Facebook, Instagram, email. And I'm always interested in meeting new people and doing new stories. So please send them my way. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much for joining me on today's Reporter's Notebook. Can't wait to have you up here again. Thank you so much.